CPDC to order. Um, our first order of business is to rearrange the um, agenda a little bit. We're going to um, take, uh, bless you, uh, we are going to take the, right, there's two approval not required plans um, that we'll take those first um, and then move into the agenda as it's printed. So I think we can start with 2627 Rocky Road, which is an A and R plan to really just a land swap between the two neighboring lots. But I'll let Mr. Bradley then explain through this. Thank you. This is a simple shift in the lot line to accommodate the ability to add a Porsche onto the front of the Porsche. And both of the parties are in the agreement. So it's, it doesn't change the frontage at all. It, change, it just changes that, That's um, correct. that lot line so that the setback from the house is, uh, from the structure is a little bit different than what it is yes. without this. The only question I had was whether there was a requirement for the this angle, for the obliqueness of this angle off the front. Is there like a minimum requirement for an angle I'm sorry. in the lot line? I was just wondering if there's a requirement for a minimum angle, minimum size angle off of that lot line. I don't know of any requirement there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah
right up to this point. Right. And then there's gravel that extends. So the pavement section's uh, 12 and a half feet wide. The gravel that exists here is 14 feet wide. Um, there's existing homes along Bunker Ave now that, that there's access, so uh, the town engineer was of the opinion it, it was sufficient width and, and grade for, for public access. It's going to do it. Um, this plan doesn't need to be good public access, it just needs to be public access. It's just access. During construction, you'd like yeah. to make sure you get the fire but for the approval not required, which really it's it's a very limited scope of what we, what we actually That's take a curiosity. No, I understood I understood, I understood that. I understood that. So, other questions? Did the CPDC endorse the ENR for thirteen bunker F? Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thanks. So, um, which which set of meeting changed?
Okay. Okay. I got it all. Everything was sent over today. Great. <laughs> So the next item on the agenda is a signed permit application for 2131 Arnold Street. I'm sure Hi. Hi. Richard Batten, I'm from Batten Brothers Sign Company. Oh, there are two copies of the And uh, 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 so basically, install two signs uh, uh, that are comprised for individual letters, like letters on both the side. So we got each letter that we the city coming down. And uh, um, uh, so it's here to comprise the individual letters. Excuse me. Yeah. We can fly down. Right here. Two feet away from here. So the front is two foot by 17 foot two inches. The rear sign is 14 inches by two inches. Curious, what's what's the lighting there in the, on the People's United? It's uh, dark. They were all illuminated oh. channel letters. Okay. So the yep. lines are kind of all the way mm -hmm. in that. Yes. Pleased it's going to be occupied. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited, but the bank's excited. <laughs> <laughs> I've had building permits on the third twenty-one. And yeah, this is 37. 37. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. There's no issue with that. Thing. Yeah, I have to let it assess it. Yeah, that's weird. It's 21 to 31, but it's also 37 on the GIS. There used to be several stores. Yeah, like that's true. Yeah. There used to be the auto yeah. parts yeah. way back. Yeah. 21 is um, Google Maps is going up as the small greens and 31 is the I know. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 So, with the external lighting, mm -hmm. there is basically, it's almost like a, a, an angled T 
it's like a almost like an angled C. So it's uh, uh, it's um, so it's it's basically like a C with the leg in here, and then the legs of the C are um, uh, provide shielding and uh, project the light towards the. So the lighting course. is on the building, and the shielding is the portions that are off the. Uh, four. Well, the um, the light projects away. It it angles back towards the building. So the C. So the light is actually on the out. There's a post and there's an angle. So the light is on the angle. So there's a there's a bar that's held out by two arms at the ends, mm -hmm. and the, the lights are about that size, and they're kind of like facing. Yeah. Okay. So I read that correctly. And it's, it's like there's a light bar that uh, that angles back towards the. Uh, uh, that's back. That's shining back towards the lettering, and the bar is a, it's approximately three inches by about an inch, uh, and so it's it's very low profile, and uh, uh, and it would be mounted above the letters and shining back down, sort of down towards it, mounted away from the building, shining towards it. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. All of the wiring is enclosed, right? Yeah, we huh. would run it within the, the arms thing. Um, so the conditions that are um, identified in this, did, I don't know if you received a, a copy of this, yeah. right? Um, this sign, the, it won't be illuminated beyond the hours of the operation of the business. Um, and that if uh, right, you get you need to get permits to mm -hmm. install it, and um, uh, if you're looking to do right uh, any other kind of signage, you need to come um, come back in. I added that condition to say you would be aware you can do a blade sign if you do wish on top of your two wall signs. So right, a blade sign is one that's sort of perpendicular to the building. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, um, would we be allowed to put in a coming soon or now open banner? There's probably be only a week between when people's closes and when work uh, is going to be opening. So, um, yeah, yeah, we do allow temporary signs. Yeah. Let me just double check what the rules are on that. Yeah, there's yeah. a 16 square foot banner. If you think you're building them on a Friday, we're opening the following Friday. Makes sense. I think you're allowed more than that. Um, it has to be right. So you do need to sign permit from the building inspector for a temporary sign. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have um, four signs, 16 square feet in sign area um, for an annual total of 56 days. Okay. What? Yeah. We do come in soon and grand opening. <laughs> I can't tell you what to put on the sign. Sorry, I'm just marketing over here. Happy it's occupied. Okay. Um, so, motion. Move to what? Approve the certificate of appropriateness for the application sign permit application, North Shore Bank, 2131 Harden Street. All those in favor? Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I usually just keep this in my hand. Oh, oh, that's fine. Okay. Whatever you Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just keep it. Yeah, just scan it. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs paper? <laughs> you just want one? Yeah, one is That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so next item, do we are we we kind of that's past the time. Um next item on the agenda, 259, 267 Main Street, um, continuing a public hearing for site plan review. <coughs> Good evening. Josh Latham here this evening on behalf of Stone Gate Construction. We have site plan review. Pursuant to section 4.6 of the bylaws for the property of 259 267 Main Street in The uh, proposal is to construct and redevelop the site for 24 multifamily residential units. It is an as of right use within the A40 district within which the primary portion of this redevelopment occurs. Uh, as mentioned last time, we did also obtain a special permit to allow a portion of the residential area of this site to be used for accessory parking. Um, just where we stand procedurally, as you may recall, we opened the public hearing with you back on January 13th. At that time, we received um, a good amount of feedback. Uh, we continued that hearing to, today, to tonight. Um, in the interim, we've made several updates to the plans, which are before you now. These uh, updates incorporate suggestions and, and input from DEP, the DRT session, the Fire Department Conservation, RMLD, and of course, this commission. Um, with that, uh, many of these updates are both technical and substantive, and I'll turn it over to Joe Pesnola, who's our engineer from Hancock Associates. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, just a, um, okay, there's several moving parts. Uh, first is, is Conservation Commission. We had introduced um, some revisions that were being required from the Conservation Commission proceedings and most importantly from the um, from the comments that were received from DEP. I think the substantive cha change uh, there was revision to the, um, to the stormwater. We removed uh, the, the infil infiltration or detention basin uh, from the back left-hand corner of the, the development site. Uh, there was an issue with the compliance of that, the outfall from that, with with some state regulations which govern public water supply. So we um, essentially couldn't have uh, the discharge within 200 feet of the stream, which is the stream is tributary to uh, to, to compensate for that. The underground infiltration areas have been, uh, were enlarged. Um, to provide the necessary volume uh, for, for the storage. Um, we have ample testing to support that, and we have um, we, we submitted that to engineering uh, for review, and there was a correspondence from, um, from the, the engineer dated Dated February 5th. Um, I would like to present a response letter to that. Uh, and we Thank do you. have revised plans uh, that we've submitted to staff for that. Um, there were very few comments uh, within that. Would I give anyone two copies of that? I thought I had seven copies. Extra. Oh, did you have? Sure. Three copies. Three copies. Uh, comments were, were very minor in nature. They had to do with uh, questions with regards to uh, some of the, uh, the foundation drain and 
the um, one of the manhole structures, so we clarified that on the revision. And the last item was uh, was a call to have uh, phosphorus removal calculations so that uh, we could prove that our design was going to be compliant with the with Reading's MS4 requirements. Uh, so we've provided those uh, the revised calculations that add the phosphorus calculations demonstrated that we need that uh, the, the necessary mark. The um, the other changes to the plan was uh, kind of from staff comments uh, with regards to showing snow storage on the landscape plan. We've, we've done that. Uh, we've been working with Light and Power, and they had um, a call for a relocation of the transformer. The transformer site plan. Light and Power wanted the transformer over here, uh, approximate to where the power is going to come in from. So we've got the transformer and the generator up here. Uh, what we've done is we've relocated the retaining wall. We've got a retaining wall that's flanking on the left, the right hand side of the drive into the garage. We just pulled that, pulled that back. So the transformer will be down below the wall. Uh, so it will be obscured from from Main Street, uh, and uh, we'll still we'll put some landscaping around it just to lower the residents' view as they come in and, and pass that. With regards to uh, architectural plans, we've added north uh, north arrows to the elevation sheets, um, and again, um, minor call-outs, uh, but really the revisions are are all very minor in, in nature. Uh, we, we have reviewed the draft decision uh, that the staff had put out and with embedded within that, there were some uh, additional comments and questions um, and I think we had a, a response to those comments and questions and I can run through those very quickly. Some, some minor housekeeping with regard to zip codes being corrected, north arrows on the elevation, um, on the uh, architectural elevations. Uh, there was a question on the, or a comment with regards to retaining wall designs, and we understand that we'll have to provide full retaining wall uh, structural plans to the building department because many of these walls are over four feet and that require a uh, structural engineer design and a building permit actually issued for them. So we've noted that on the, um, on the plans. There was a, a question or comment with regard to the affordable housing. Um, uh, while the inclusionary zoning uh, or affordability doesn't apply to this project, um, staff is saying there's, there's an opportunity here at this time, we, as we've stated in the, in the past, we are not proposing any affordable units. Um, question or comments regarding egress and security lighting, uh, and that will be on the, the final plans with uh, for building permit, and can be reviewed by the police department at, at that time. We will have the building lighting and uh, security lighting design at, at this time. We had mentioned, I had mentioned the um, transformer location and that change and um, the snow storage. The last comment has to do with um, additional samples of the intended materials uh, with regards to the architecturals and uh, some changes or some additional renderings that the board had wanted. Um, so he sent the site plans this presentation, which we talked about yesterday. So this is um, 
this is the rendering that the board, the commissioner wanted uh, from Main Street. So we've added the plantings and the wall that we, we are proposing. Uh, additional changes to this were, would be um, the incorporation of the stone material uh, in the center to mimic the, the, the other side of the building at the entrance. Um, and they've also added a, a bank of windows here. Um, this, these are actually closet locations. So these will be, they'll be real windows, but they won't be window, they'll be sheetrocked on the inside. Um, so they'll, but they'll give the, uh, the symmetry or they'll mirror the front, the other side of the building. And there won't be that interruption in the, in the patterning. There's the, we do have uh, material samples of the cedar impression uh, final siding. There's two different um, final siding that's proposed, the, the shakes on the tower elements, and then uh, what, are, what are these uh, clapboards on the, the intermediates? So, and then the, again, the, the stone in the, in the center that mimics that. We do have samples of, of the, um, the vinyl siding and also the, uh, the stone. So we'll be. This is heavy. But the, if you, the, that um, image doesn't do, do justice to the to the textural changes between the shape and the, the clapboard, it's clearer here. It's just the stone in the center. The, uh, this is the the main street side. So same same material textural changes between the shakes and the clapboards with the stone in the, in the center and the additional windows showing the, the trees and, and no balconies on this side. Hmm? No balconies on occasion. This one up here. No, the other one here. There, there. Tucked into the um, tucked into the, um, the pattern. They make a shake corner, or is that going to be a trim board? The corners. Corners make on a the shake shakes. corner. Gutters. You've got gutters on this towards the back only because we've got a all, flat roof. All the way around the roof. And then we black to match the uh, original trim. And there'll be a awesome brand new drain system that will bring it around the building into the, into the infiltration system on the back. Let me show the actual picture of the other building. Yeah. Desirous of waiting for the Conservation Commission to get further along in their process. We actually had a, um, as you may know, the Conservation Commission has some, some member changes. So we actually had to re advertise and re notice the butters for this Wednesday night. So we'll be kind of refreshing that process with the new members. Uh, to move forward. Uh, we don't anticipate finishing on Wednesday because we 
the, the commission wants us to uh, go back to DEP and show them our changes uh, in response to their comments and get some kind of a high sign that, that they're satisfied. We've done that. We just haven't gotten any uh, response from DEP and don't anticipate we'll have it by Wednesday. We're actually going to try to meet the conservation of the uh, DEP analyst in the on site. We really feel that they didn't, they're not appreciating the current state of the site and its need for restoration and that the restoration that we have proposed within the, the plans uh, of the buffer zone and the riverfront and uh, the cleanup that's being done uh, is, is going a long way to justify the wetland impact, which is their major point of contention, is the 2,000 square feet of wetland impact. So that is, I think, the presentation of the where we stand. I'm happy to answer any questions. The, um, questions? Yes. Um, if one is, if a resident is using the outside parking that's down below, I didn't see any lighting from that front pathway. What do you have to accommodate those safety measures? From the from the building, what you call the front. Oh, the, the front here. Correct. Oh. You've got a path shown in your picture, but no lighting on that pathway. There'll be there'll be lighting in the the um, underneath the over over ahead here, uh, underneath the part of share the overhang, um, and then there's a supposed light right here. So between the two, we think that this, this whole area will be well lit from, from here to the park. Certainly, if, if not, we can add pedestrian bollards. Or well, you had some about. lovely lighting around all the plantings, but nothing on the pathway. You have a paver pathway on that front entrance. Yeah, we could. From your picture, that's what it looks like. Yeah, we could add. We could, we add, could add some lighting. Uh, see light pedestrian bollards. Am I seeing posts or bollards on this um, plan? On all the plans, isn't that a light yes. fixture? Uh, this, this. Those are those are uh, light pole poles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the main parking lot lights. I'm saying to supplement that, um, we could add pedestrian bollards. Do you think supplemental lighting will be needed? I, d I don't. I don't believe so because we we do, will have the, the lighting from. Uh, from the overhang here on the underneath side so that'll, that'll splash this lighting and then this light here has its casting intensities of 1.2 to 1.8 lumens 3.6 1.8 so I think the combination of, of the two is, is going to be good I think maybe this handicap walkway um, this circuitous route is just to be able to get the rays or um, because of the relative elevation change between the first floor and here. So we may need something over here for my bubble to get down. So if we can keep on lighting for a minute. <clears throat> for a minute, one of the things that you said in one of your responses here was that um, uh, egress and security lighting, um, you'll be provided with a building permit. Um, I'd really like to see that incorporated into this lighting plan, and I'll tell you why. Because, right, I, I assume that your our front of the building, your back of the building, um, right, there's going to be you're you're likely to have something along on there, or, or I should say, I want to see what you are planning on that, not at the building permit stage, because that's the, what we've what has happened in the past. And I, I don't want to have it happen here is that you end up putting some wall pack thing on there and, and it being, you know, sort of the situation with where the street is and stuff that, that's, that egress and security lighting is the lighting 
Um, and so if you're going to do something like that, let's get it on the plan so we all understand okay. so that you, that you, that you plan it and not your, you know, plan it from an architectural standpoint. And, and you, you get to see it. And we get to see what, what, understand what yep. the impact is. Yeah, not throwing it up there at the last minute and saying, oh, it's secure. Fair. We'll, we'll do that. So. Did I see uh, LED accents on the rendering? One of the renderings showed lighting at like the building structure. Yeah. Um, if I can just answer your question, perhaps on the lighting. Sure. We could go back to the actual air caves again from Snowgate Construction. Um, so we actually this one. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but to, to answer your question, uh, first of all, you can see there's some of these ballers here, baller lighting on the walkway. So we can certainly add one of those on the end cap. These match the actual uh, parking lot lights. So if need be, we can add those on the walkway. So we'll have done that here. But as far as lighting goes on the building, the only lighting that you'd see on the building is that each, there's a door obviously to the balcony or a patio. So there'd be just a, a, a small wall light there as well as on the Main Street side of the building, there's two egress doors, so we'd have a similar um, light fixture. We will, I thought it might show up in this picture, but they're actually so small, you don't even see them, but we can actually bring you a picture and, and add that, so you know exactly what you get. But there's no other lighting, just made it nothing, nothing on the soffits. Um, I think that's just more for effect, the, um, on the render, the lighting on the, the uh, shrubbery. We get the cut sheets and add yeah. it to the photo mat. Yeah. So this is where you're saying you're going to pull this wall back with the transformer in? Yes. Is it actually going to be down here or is it up at some other height? So no, it'll be down at the at that garage level. Down here somewhere. Yeah. Well, there's a slope to it. There's a slope to the driveway that comes down to the door, so it probably will be somewhere somewhere in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you had conversations with RMD about that? Yes. Actually, this is an example. When I was saying use cardinal directions on the elevations, like uh, saying like west facade, east facade, north facade, south facade, that's what I had in mind. So that, like, because right side is very subjective, right? Yeah. Especially because the front is the back, and, you know, so. Okay. Understood. Got it. So. I'm still having a real hard time with the, my front of the building, your back, um, in sort of the detail that's on all the different sheets here. Um, when I look at the grading plan, it looks to me like all of the um, all of the contours are even, evenly spaced. Uh, which to me says that's a nice gradual slope up to um, some point where there's a where it plateaus. But then you also talk about a uh, a retaining wall somewhere in this space as well. Um, and so, how tall is a retaining wall? Um, you know, I, I guess I don't have a good sense of what it is we're really looking at here and what all this means because that I, I it, to me it doesn't match from plan to plan the, the wall ranges from from two feet to three feet from here to here and at the bottom of the slope side. on the street side so so bottom elevation is 95 top is 97. we'll probably do similar to the and, and these elevations are Minimum elevations of wall from a design standpoint to minimize the wall part. Now we add to that the aesthetics, and this this would most likely have a, a more of a consistent top of wall at 97. So this will go from 
Um, we're showing zero to actually be three feet high at this point, three feet high at this point, or two feet high at this point, three feet high at this point. So it would be more consistent with the with the uh, this rendering, which which shows a wall that's about two feet, so it's pr probably going to be a little bit taller than that. Mm -hmm. like the difference on the, that the uh, architect didn't pick up on this <laughs> is there will be a slope behind the wall um, that will go from that 97 up to the, the 101. And that's our palette for the, the planting. And then the landscape architect has tried to work with that. So there'll be There'll be shrubbery and there'll be planting, which will soften the the uh, the impact of that that slope. So you have about a because right, it's a ten feet difference between the sidewalk and your sort of the the um, patio level. So that would be uh, one or two foot below the wall, a little bit of a slope. Right, we'll, um, up to the bottom of the wall, about a four foot wall, and then about a four foot slope up to the, from the top of the wall up to the I'm calling it the patio area, but the, the flat space out in front of the, the building. <coughs> and somewhere in that slope area, you also have you have this walkway, right? That you're, it's, that it's, you're showing in one a, of these. Right, it's a pathway. What we're trying to just indicate is that through the through the landscaping there's a pathway, and then we'll we'll come down here and add some uh, landscape stairs just to, to formalize kind of the ability to get down and out. So is that is that walk if pathway? Does that mean it? There's a with that in that four foot rise. What did what's that mean? Right. I mean, it's got to be. If it's a pathway, it's got to be flat. And so, I'm trying to because this is what we're going to be looking at, right? I mean, and this is why I'm harping on this. Yeah, this no, is what we're going to be looking at, and, and and we really don't have that much detail on that 10 foot as you're standing on the uh, as you're standing on the sidewalk. That's what everyone's looking at as they're driving by is this wall and the landscaping and. Um, right, you, 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 your eye isn't going to be drawn up to the building. You're going to see this landscaping. So I want to be very clear that we all understand what you're doing and what your plans are. Yeah. In, in this corner, the, the wall doesn't wrap. What we do is we, we have the relief coming, coming all the way down to the, um, to the drive. So in this three to one slope, we'll have a series of landscape um, stairs. That would take you down. But once you get up to the plateau um, at 101, the, the idea is that this just works its way through the landscape. That would be up at the 101 level, up at the 101. Okay, we, we could give you a, a cross section through here. Shows. Yeah, that would, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, and and work um, to make those those couple of changes with with regards to the height of the wall to have that consistent top of wall at 97 or 98, and have that cross section to indicate how that's going to look. Because the, the slopes are, you know, the, there's not much slope uh, from here to here, from 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 the sidewalk to the base of the wall. Um, and the slope after it is three to one, so it's softer than this two to one or one to one. It's, it's not crazy. Um, but you've got 30 feet to climb 10 feet, right? Plus a wall in there. So, right? Plus the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So. John, um, you might want to announce the withdrawal number just, just in case anyone's here for that. Oh, sure. Um, and you guys will need to vote on it because it's a special permit. We have to vote on the two approved withdrawal. Withdrawal. That seems silly, but. I think this is Yeah, I think so, but just in case. So, 
just an announcement for now, and then we can vote after. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Just in case there's anybody here. No, not hours. That we're talking about. Village Street. Village Street. I'm saying Village Street. Yeah. Oh, the audience was like, all right, for hours. Yeah. yeah. What time is it? 8.30. 8.23. Um, I'm sorry, so just a little interruption here. Um, we, if there is anyone here for um, 2123 Village Street, um, that application um, that we had a, actually a couple of different meetings about a special home occupation, um, the applicant withdrew their application um, without prejudice, so we're not going to be hearing that. We'll, we have to vote on it later, but I just didn't, if folks were here for that, I didn't want you to have to sit through all of this just to hear that later. So, thank you. Uh, one other item that the staff did brought up, bring up um, that we haven't addressed is the loading zone, and there is a, technically a requirement for one per 20 units. We have 24 units, so technically we need two. We are showing one. I think one is sufficient. So if you would, within the actions the board needs to take, we would include a waiver for that additional loading space. And I'm sorry, remind me, is that the only waiver that, are there other waivers that you were asking for? That's really the only one. Waiver from a full traffic study? Oh, yes. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Um, the only other thing I can think of is that the, somewhere here it says this looks like unique to Reading kind of design. It really is unique to Reading. I guess it's unique in Reading. It's the first one you've put in here, but it's just like all your other buildings, so it's not really unique at all. And it certainly isn't Reading. I'm not saying it's ugly, I'm just saying it, it's not unique. Yeah, I guess, yeah, one one thing, Nick, I just, I really wanted to ask you is, you know, I guess I'm still stuck on the fact, and right, this is no surprise, I've said it before, is, right, that the, that, um, the back of the building is facing the, the street, and I think that, you know, with the changes in the stonework that you did is in the added windows sort of helps, seems to help that. Um, but this is more of a question for Nick. Do, um, um, you know, is there something that that you see that um, or that jumped out at you that might help that? I can certainly right. They're not going to put a door, <laughs> right? A, 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 for you, a back door on this side. Um, but but so I looked at that and then. There's the balconies, and hopefully those will be active spaces. So that, that's kind of nice, right? There's there's yeah. some activity on the building. Um, and then if you go, I guess it's which way? It's north, right? Where the apartments are, the brick mm -hmm. apartments that are already there. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah, like those yeah. buildings, they're non descript just brick boxes yeah. and don't do yeah. anything. This is doing a lot more than that. You know, what would you do? Would you put a, freight, a fake portico? That's just, that seems silly. Yeah. So again, I think the, the balconies and the amount of glass should maybe activate it. The landscaping really does look like that. It'll be pretty nice. Um, I'm not designing people's buildings anymore. No, I gave yeah. comments yeah. to somebody and they just sort of took the sketch and didn't even develop it. 2020 is a year of hope. <laughs> the most you can hope is if we get hit by January. Um, it's February. It's February. <laughs> That's right. So, um, I, right, you, I think you have a couple of things to work on here. I, I don't think that, right, I, I, at least I didn't hear um, dramatic. Uh, dramatic changes or requests um, uh, from this board. I think you have some 
right? You have some more to work to do with with CONCOM or maybe not more with oh, DEP. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Um, but we don't want to do anything here until if you have to make some changes with that because that could change some of your site plan. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, um, questions or comments from the public on this? No. All right. So, so we can continue to the March 9th agenda at 7.30. Yeah, yeah, March 9th. <clears throat> Move that we continue the public hearing for uh, 259, 269 Main Street, Stonegate Construction Corporation, uh, site plan review to March 9 at 745. 730. 730. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right, thanks. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think that's okay. You can send me images. So if this board turned over, you would have to start uh, an application. And that when you left, that we no longer had our voting quorum, which is what happened to conservation. They didn't have a quorum, but or they just had a different quorum? No, they didn't. They had a different quorum. Yeah. That seems unfair. It's really not. It's it's um it's been going on a long time. Well, with them, so they've been coming back conservation for a long time, um, and it's just it's. The way it goes. Interesting. The, the re advertising is costly. You know, the costly, but they just can rehab. They don't have to, like, yeah. start yeah. totally it fresh. Like, like, what if you're at the very last meeting and all of a sudden you're losing another two months? Think about that before you decide season. to leave the. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what's, no what's on your plate. Um, so, that, as I had mentioned before, um, the next item on. Our agenda is um, right. That's where we're at. Yep. Uh, Twenty-one twenty-three Village Street. Um, we had continued a public hearing for a special home occupation special permit, and somewhere in here, maybe it should have been behind your agenda. Oh, here it is. Yep. Um, we had a uh, request from the applicant for, to withdraw without prejudice, um, and we need to take a vote to accept that. Is that what you think? Yeah. And then we close it out and we and we give something to the town clerk, so it's like a closed okay. out. Nice and a notice of decision. Yeah. So and we, we let the voters know. Do we acknowledge it? Yeah, do you we, just acknowledge it yeah. and, and vote to accept it. The withdrawal without question. All right, so that was a motion by you, Nick? Yeah, good job. Yes. So moved. All right. Second. All those in favor? All right. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, continuing. Continued public hearing for a, subdiv a definitive subdivision plan at 135, 139, and 149 R Howard Street. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Myself here. The commission. Uh, in the street, civil design consultants uh, from the, app, the applicant infrastructure holdings. Uh, so, 
Uh, we were here. We were here a month ago, I think, and we had some. Um, we had made some. That was really the first major set of revisions we'd made to this to this subdivision. We've, we've kind of along really more of a conservation intensive, I guess, process so far, dealing with a lot of their concerns and, and comments, uh, and got to the point of submitting last time. Since then, uh, we have, um, we, we came into that meeting with some, uh, some minor conservation comments still outstanding, and then we came into the last meeting uh, looking to um, get feedback from this commission, as well as uh, the engineer and fire department and other, other reviewers, and the hope was to kind of roll all those in to, uh, to revise set of plans, calculations, and all that, which is what is in uh, for you tonight. Um, so we, we've uh, made several several changes in in general. This is um, substantially the same project. It's a six lot subdivision access off Howard Street. Um, all of these lots meet the required areas, and and the houses will have the proper setbacks, and, and the frontages all comply, and, and things of that nature. Um, but there have been some kind of minor tweaks from feedback from a variety of, of reviewers at this point. I think one of the major ones is the right of way is now 60 feet. Uh, so we went, made, went ahead and made that change. It was 50 feet at the last plan set. Um, and, and just to kind of clarify, the 60 foot was really the, I'll call it the straight section, but I guess the section leading up to the cul-de-sac. The cul-de-sac has, has kind of forever been 60 feet. So that was already compliant. It was really widening this section here from 50 to 60. So we made that change. Andrew, would you mind scrolling down to mm -hmm. the next, the layout plan? So we, we made that change. Um, we also, uh, kind of dealing with the town engineer on this, revised the, the drainage configuration. So before we had a couple small ponds here that kind of outlet it to the town's system there. Um, we've we had this infiltration basin here, which captured really the majority of the storm water that, that was generated by the site. And then we had one catch basin here in the road. The cul-de-sac was kind of pitched from this side of the screen over to this catch basin here. So um, based on the, the feedback from the from uh, the town engineer, we, we tweaked the drainage. Um, these ponds are now gone. And we have a, a low point here. It kind of comes up a bit and then back down to a low point here with some catch basins. Gets piped back here. And there's now two catch basins in the cul-de-sac that collected in all of that makes its way to the infiltration basin. So in, in terms of how much water was going there to that basin before and then ultimately towards the towards the wetlands, uh, that's all very consistent. All the, the numbers work, the the, um, the peak flows to the to the various design points, the volumes, things like that all still still work. It's just really more of a, uh, a uh, new way of getting there, I guess we can call it that. So we tweet that to, to um, to deal with the, uh, the engineer's concerns there. Um, the, uh, there was, one of the questions still outstanding is, is the parking on street. Um, the roadway is still 24 feet wide through this section leading up to the cul-de-sac. Um, it's my understanding that the town engineer's preference would be to not have parking there. Um, there was some discussion about slope granite, and so the ability to kind of mount that. Um, he was, he felt very strongly, I guess I'll put it that way, that that was not uh, the town standard and not something that he would be looking for. So his preference would be the vertical granite curb, which is typical for a roadway, which is what we continue to show and uh, making this a no parking situation. So that being said, these these houses will have garages so you can fit a couple spaces in there. You could probably, you know, certainly lot four, which extends way up here. You have lots of available parking, but each one of these you fit three four additional cars in this. You're talking four, five, six cars for each of these houses um, just within their own garage and driveways associated with them. And parking is, is allowed on Howard Street. So that's that's where we're at today um, uh, regarding the uh, curbing and the side, and not the sidewalks, but the parking situation. Uh, the street lights, that's something that came up from this commission, but also the, uh, the um, police department weighed on it as well. So as, a, as a, one of the changes we made is there's a single street light down at the end of the cul-de-sac. That's uh, my understanding of where the critical area was to be lit was um, the cul-de-sac itself. So there's a street light that will be located down there. Um, we had kicked around the idea of having um, kind of more uh, residential post lighting at the end of each driveway. And actually the engineer commented that now that we have 
particularly now that we have 60 feet, those would need to be owned by the town, which is um, not something that was really preferred on, on his end. So we, we scrapped that idea and went with the street light down at the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, some other tweaks that we've made. Uh, the, the drain pipe was, um, we had plastic pipe before. This is now concrete for the town's specification. Uh, um, I mentioned the infiltration basins. Um, there were some questions about compliance with the EPA and their MS4, the, the town-wide permit there. We provided those calculations that have shown um, that, that works. Um, and uh, the result of all this, at least from the town engineer side, was uh, the um, best review letter I have ever received as an engineer. So that, that I have that going for me here. Well, he basically said that everything has been satisfactorily addressed as far as he's concerned. So that was on, on the uh, engineering side. The fire department's big comment was regarding this lot four, which has a long driveway that extends up. They had some, really they, they seemed to indicate that they would be satisfied if that driveway could support the fire truck itself. Um, so what we specified for that driveway, all driveways actually, all pavement will be built to the same cross section. So the roadway cross section, which is the town standard, so um, obviously suited to hold the fire truck, will be applied to this driveway so that we confident that that drive will be able to um, let the fire truck um, support the fire truck as if it needed to um, to make its way up there. So that's what's the difference there? Is it mostly the sub? Grade materials, or is it the top layer? Because yeah. if, say it degrades in ten years and they go to repave it, the building owner might not know he's supposed to do that. Uh, that's, it's a good point. I mean, maybe that's something that could be worked into the. Um, I'm not sure how that'd be worked in. That, that's a it's a fair point. I mean, but the to be honest, in a lot of our projects, we kind of have one pavement cross section. Um, but sometimes I think you know, driveways you can go thinner, probably in all aspects. You know, thinner with the gravels, thinner with the mix. Uh, but in this case, no, no, just capture that. Yeah, I don't know if that's a condition against that. I don't know how we relay that somehow. But yeah, it's a good point that 20, 30 years from now, there could be missed. Or should someone uh, go to take that somehow? So, uh, but that was that was really the only fire department comment there. We had a couple comments from conservation. Um, outstanding. Now we'll be before them on Wednesday. Um, and those were really related to some calculations with the, um, the pond itself. And then we had, uh, I, I think, some of these dry wells, they wanted some clarification on their depths and their function and things like that. So we provided that as well. I haven't, I checked in with um, Chuck Taroni today. He hadn't received feedback as of yet, but we feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, we've addressed those comments as well. So, um, in general, I think we've we've kind of hit the mark with with the comments that we received. You know, but we're here tonight certainly to hear what this commission has to say. And, uh, answer these other questions that you uh, have. So we we're still very curious about the width of this. I mean, you said you'd work with the police on on the width of the road. Is that right? The the width of the paved surface. Yeah. So, who did you talk to that that you agreed on the um, vertical? <clears throat> that was um, that was the town engineer said that he. I just I guess I, I'm trying to figure out how you're going to enforce no parking, because with that curb, you're going to have people in the middle of the street. I mean, I just don't see. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so as background, right? The town engineer, when things like this. The previous town engineer, when things like this came up, he would come to these meetings. Um, and I don't want, it, it's not fair to put you in the middle. Um, I, I think we have a disagreement with the town engineer on how to address a uh, roadway width. Because in this instance, if he insists, which, you know, I get it, insisting on vertical granite curb, then I would say the road needs to be wider. I, I think we need to come to an understanding. Uh, uh, right, so l let's let's back up. The town has a standard, right? Yep. It's it's 30. it's thirty foot. It's a thirty foot pavement with vertical granite curb, right? Um, and so, what what you're looking for is something different than that. And we see one way to accommodate that, and he sees another. <laughs> and 
uh, we need to we need to address that with in, I'm going to say internally within the town um, uh, and not put you in the middle sure um, and uh, one way um, you know we talked about it before one way to deal with it is is not to have the vertical granite curb um, uh, we've done that's been done other places um, uh, but I can see you know we've insisted on in other places and having the vertical granite curb and and the, the wider roadway so um, you know there's there's reasons for both and not knowing his input um, sort of puts us at a disadvantage. I, I think there's trade-offs too to, to just an increased or decreased amount of just pavement in general too. I mean, there's more pavement that's more to all and it's more to pay for yep. to maintain it than stormwater too. I know there's a big push nationwide for, for treatment and less improvement. So, you know, I, I'm not Agreed. arguing yes. with you. I'm just, you know, yeah. kind of building I, off that. I, piece, from, yeah. from, I'll say from my own personal um, uh, perspective, I think saying that you can't that there's no parking on the street um uh you know that puts the onus then on the police to enforce and as you mentioned yeah you can park down on howard on howard street and then uh that puts the the problem on to to those neighbors and that's that's not right either so um you know it, right we, we need to, sure. to figure that out so can i ask you a question so, um, do you need the vertical granite curbing to make the drainage work, or like would another type of curbing still get you where you? Yeah, it, the curbing is really just to keep it on the road and get it to the, the catch basins, the drain structures. Yeah, so it, it gets used asphalt. You know, so any any type of curb. I know we're not using asphalt. No. Right, but and then the other question I have is, if you widen it and you have more impervious area to infiltrate, like will your drainage design still work? We uh, honestly we haven't okay. looked at that in a long time. I, we would make something work, yeah, but it, I, the implications of that I don't know. Uh, hands, I guess. And did Ryan say anything to you about putting up no parking signs? Because the the tricky thing is police wouldn't have anything to enforce without no parking signs. So that that's another one of them. Yeah. Um, did he say anything to you about that? Or? I'm not sure he did. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, I, yeah. I honestly just can't remember, to be perfect. I don't think it was in the letter. No. Um, I, I can't remember. We, we did meet, I did meet individually one on one with. We talked about just kind of everything, but I, I honestly can't remember if you mentioned it. There's not a problem with science that can be installed. Yeah. Um. Um, besides roadway cross section, other comments from the board? No, I, mean, I think it's, it seems like you and the town engineers on the drainage have really gone to go back and forth and try to address this issue with this challenging area um, adequately. I think the piece that I was concerned about last week was how it seemed like the water was just going to go into Howard Street. And from what I, this, this dip in the middle seems like a, a good solution so that you're not pushing things back into a, right. a storm drain not on the on that area. So we have a, there's a small a high point here. Um, and then there's a catch basin. There's actually one in the mouth of the driveway that we're going to move right. over. So it, even if a small portion that does go there, if one of the, the numbers work from a drainage analysis, and that'll, it's not going to go far because it's drainage right at the, right at the driveway. So. I, so I wanted to ask Julie, um, yeah. the the reading the the. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we did get a letter from. Um, um, yeah, Robert Connors is he here? No. Um, from uh, Howard Street, raising concern about um, about the. Um, added traffic on Howard Street from from this and, and the suggestion was um, uh, to include a stop sign at the end of the river. I think um, a 
not to go back, but I, I think you're supposed to stop at yeah. when you come out of this road. <laughs> I don't know if you have to put a stop sign there, to, but um, I'm not sure. I believe that's there's no stop sign on Milton, and there's no stop sign at this other intersection. Here. That's right. There that's is next one. Yeah. County. Yeah. County. There's no stop sign at that intersection. Those are the worst. There's no houses on Milton. But aren't the aren't the rules of the road is that in this situation you are <laughs> supposed to stop? Sure. You stop. are yeah. supposed stop. to stop. Not gonna stop. I mean, if you yeah. don't, <laughs> it's risky. We did condition it prior to plan endorsement as well that a stop sign. Would be but I guess I guess the answer though is that um, the, the truth is not to pass a buck. But we're not in control of. Um, uh, traffic signage on roadways and the roadway commissioners, which is the um, select board. Select board. Yeah, it could be because it's technically still private property as part of this project. If this road had been constructed and was adopted by the town, then it would be. Oh. Yeah, so okay. as part of this definitive subdivision plan, you absolutely can say if you want. Oh. Uh, no parking signs, a stop sign, um, uh, all, all those right. things. So private property. It's 24 feet wide, right? Yeah. If a car parks on one side, it takes up eight feet. It's still 16 feet to get by. I grew up on a pretty narrow street, and people knew not to park on both sides of it. Kind of like staggered at you. Made your way around. It's traffic calming. Traffic calming, yeah. Oh, um, I, I would have driven this in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. So is it really that bad if cars are parked on this street? No, I live on a 24 foot wide street and people park on the street all the time. Right. So the difference, however, the difference is that we don't have a vertical granite curve. And so what, what people tend to do is, um, well, there's two, honestly, there's two, two schools of thought in our neighbors. Um, some park completely on the street so as to create some traffic calming and others pull a little bit off to the side. And I guess, um, I, which creates a little bit less traffic calming, but um, but um, there, from time to time, there are problems with larger vehicle, you know, delivery vans and stuff getting past someone, the cars that are parked on the street, you know, getting your furniture delivered. I, I would think so. <laughs> I would think in general here too, is the driveways are long enough where you know, you're talking about isolated incidents yeah. where there should theoretically be parking lots a party or, or something like that that someone might even want to otherwise I mean, personally would pull up the driveway. It's hard to go to the house. You know, the reality is you will park in the cul-de-sac and walk. It's not that far a distance and the cul-de-sac has plenty of room for cars to park and move around. I doubt anyone who could park closer is going to park in the middle of the street. Park in the middle of the street. Like if they're if that's the closest spot to where they want right. to go is in the cul de sac. Then yeah, I agree. But <laughs> and I know for a fact that John Street has granite curbing and people park on the sides all the time. If you don't put the curb in and people park on the shoulder, the roadway edge just starts to degrade. It just breaks away. So if it was wider, I'm just concerned that the roadway edge will break away. You'll just get dead areas of mud. And which, is, which is why I think that we were thinking the slope granite curve, why, how, why that came up in our last discussion. Right. But so Julie, you can say we could put up no parking signage on the whole area there. I mean, I pick one side. I do both personally, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, another thing you could do to like get to keep the process moving along is condition it such that the Parking Traffic Transportation Task Force, which is an internal group of staff, comes up with a solution, whether it be widening the road slightly, adding stop signs, uh, sorry, adding no parking signs, um, so we can figure it out internally. But maybe this process can still continue. You know. Okay. You will you will still get a chance to review the plan before endorsement again. So okay. if that's something you'd be amenable to. 
So that would be part of the conditions. You could condition it in such a way that we could try to work out a solution. Um, knowing what you think, knowing what Ryan thinks, knowing what the engineer thinks. Um, to me, that's it's my remaining concern. So if you believe that there's a internal way to work on this. Other comments from the board? Um, folks, um, anyone, any comments from the public? Yeah, I got a couple of comments. Okay. Be yeah, before you, um, if you can just state your name, um, uh, name and address. Pauline Ashkenazi, 144 Howard Street. So I'm across from the lot line. And we tend to see during the storm is a lot of water there. And I know you're going to be filling it and doing whatever you need to do to make sure the water gets absorbed. But I look at this and I say, our neighborhood is really going to be affected by the aesthetics of this. I'm good, you know, looking out my window and seeing. <laughs> lot one developed, lot five, and lot six. The other three, I don't think that's acceptable to our community. You have residents on Milton Road who have lovely backyards that are now going to have people 20 feet in the backyard. Chuck Castelluccio. Okay, so you move the retention pond from the back and then you set it up at the cul-de-sac. So what does he have now? He's got a house in his backyard. I don't think the town of Reading is doing any of us in this neighborhood any, any, anything useful to look at. They're going to be huge houses don't fit the neighborhood. I'm disgusted. I really am to be treated like this. I go for three houses, lots one, five, and six. Eliminate the others. Leave it as conservation land. Leave it as wetland. We have animals there, deer, wildlife. Put in your water area, leave it natural. Why do we need all these houses? Uh, I don't buy it. I don't like it. I, I understand that. Um, and I don't know what I would think if I lived right here um, either. But I, um, I guess I, what I'll, I'll point you to is that Reading has, uh, and I don't know how far it goes back, to the 50s or 60s subdivision subdivision yeah subdivision regulations that established um, what any property owner can do with their land um, and they what they can do to subdivide it and make um, you know and, and build homes on it and so um, right uh, Howard Street all along Howard Street at one point was you know one big property and some developer came through and created everyone's individual lots and that's how Reading um, how that's how Reading developed and so what we've done what the, the town does is set up these regulations on on um, you know through town through town meeting um, you know w what um, what what are the rights of each property owner and um, we came up with this the the town meeting came up with a set of rules on what's appropriate and how we can, how property um, owners can subdivide and and build multiple, you know, um, uh, build uh, developments. And so this development actually, this fits all of those, um, all of those those regulations. Um, and so, really, to to some degree, the the way to change. The character of Reading is to, to to change some of those those regulations, um, uh, which at this point is sort of hard to do because we've we've there's not much <laughs> there's not much land left um, uh, to to develop, and so that's what's that's what really what's happened is those those properties that are sort of marginal m marginal 
like this, this infill have become, um, you know, get, get so squeezed and squeezed in. What? When do we get to um, It's wetlands. So, um, if, if a developer has, meets all the regulations, we can't stop it. It's their, it's their right. Um, it's, it's essentially their right to develop that way. Those are the rules that, we, that the town set up, or town meeting set up. It's not the town. Town meeting, right? All of us as residents set up the rules on how land can get developed. If I could just add to that. Sure. This development is actually less dense than the surrounding neighborhood. The 10 houses across on your side of Howard Street are more dense than this whole development. Your house backs up to somebody else's property, and the west side of Milton Road, those properties back up to other houses, and the north side of Westcroft does the same thing. Um, yeah, but so it's just a condition. These houses are just so big. But they take up less space than what's happening on your side of Howard Street. And they're larger lots. And they're larger, the, the larger lots. Much larger lots. So what we try and do is, it, well, what we, we, what has to happen is make sure that they comply with all the wetland um, uh, regulations, you know, uh, through the conservation commission, um, uh, and then for a subdivision, make sure that what we do is make sure that they um, comply with all the subdivision regulations and sort of work with work with the applicant to. to um, sort of minimize the or um, minimize the impact to the best that can be done within those sets of regulations. Um, um, your levers yeah. are town meeting, so that's that's where your leverage is. In order to stop, I'm sorry, in order to stop things, right? This meeting is to, so that you all can understand, bring up issues that, that you know, that, that maybe no one thought of before in terms of um, impacts or the, or the way that things are going to, the way that things um, uh, uh, may operate or not operate very well. So. Hi. Suzanne Algeri, 149 Howard Street. Um, just a quick question around um, the size of the roadway. I'm trying to follow along with yeah. the discussion, but it sounds like you're making a lot of concessions around maybe what is usually, I don't know, something. Well, like so the, our, the standard for Reading, we have, yeah. right, I just mentioned we have these standard um, subdivision regulations, and um, uh, for the right-of-way, Right, the the roadway right of way, our our standard is is sixty feet wide, and um, actually they came right. They yeah, uh, it was fifty, and we said no, it needs to be sixty. That's what the town wants to wants to own. Um, what we, you know, um, these regulations were put in place back in the fifties and have evolved in different standards and stuff, and. Um, uh, as a as a board, and I think just in general, right, thinking on pavement has changed over the years. And what we try and do is make sure or try and have as less pavement as possible. And so our standard is a 30 foot wide um, pavement roadway. We think that oftentimes, especially with cul-de-sacs, you don't really you don't need 30 feet of pavement, um, right? We, uh, that you can get by with 20 feet, it's less impact to stormwater, less impact to the environment, you know, less heat, less, more trees, more green. I think in general, it's better to have a, you know, as small of a, of a roadway cross section as you possibly can, but still have it function as it needs to. And that's really what you hear this is that, um, is that, um, you know, uh, we want to keep the pavement as narrow as possible, but still have it function. And so, what is that? What is that right width? Understanding that um, people still will want to park on the street, um, probably not a lot, probably not very often, right? It's um, but there will be some people that park on the street there. And does it function? Being twenty foot wide, twenty feet wide, with someone parking on the street. 
hoping would still be safe for emergency vehicles to go down. It, that, right. Those are the yes. Yeah. Those so are the questions. I think. I think your frame. It's not quite concessions. I think we are always very sensitive to questions of traffic and parking, and the third one is emergency vehicles. And so when we're kind of pushing and questioning it, those are the three things that we're keeping in mind, as well as what John was talking about in terms of the water. So it's just you know I think all of us are concerned about the impacts on the neighbors for the parking yeah, situation no, in particular. Yeah. From, from this perspective, it sounds like it's very much in favor of developers and what you're trying to work with them um, to be able to maintain kind of the current status. And I, I just, it sounds like concessions from this. Uh, yeah, I think in the, in the roadway with, I think it's in everyone's, uh, it's in their best interest, you know, not to pay for all the pavement, but it's in the town and the neighborhood's best interest not to have more pavement that n never gets used. So. So one thing developers almost always try to avoid is vertical granite curbing. For what? The vertical granite curbing, they almost always ask if they can exclude that. Yeah. They're putting it in. Yeah. So the the benefits, right? You know, the, it's it's curbing, right? Vertical granite curbing, standard curbing uh, made out of granite. The benefit, and and that is the town standard. And the benefit is that you know plows do not chew it up. Um, you know, it doesn't get all ruined when when plows come through, and and it can be there, and it will be there for a long time. And um, some towns put in, um, you know, just formed pavement, and you, you, yeah, or a, or a little. Um, it's called a Cape Cod berm, which is just like a little. Um, loaf. Yeah. What? The bread loaf. Yeah, yeah. It's a piece um, of asphalt. Like a, it's just asphalt extruded. Um, and and. It, it, those get it's a lot cheaper, but those get um, those get torn up, um, and which is we, we typically don't we don't do. What we have allowed in some cases is a um, uh, um, vertical a sloped um, granite, which is right not straight up and down, but sloped a little bit, and so that way cars can um uh, more easily drive over it but it's still granite so it doesn't get beat up as much so i just want to add one more so i think the frame to think about it this way it's not that we're doing this in favor of the developers if you start off with the frame that john was saying is that they have a right to do something with their own property based on zoning rules and based on the fact that it's own their own rules so we start from that place and then we start asking the questions as much as we can to minimize the negative impacts, given the fact that it is as of right to do the development. And so when we're doing this, it may feel as if we're allowing them to do so, but what you're hearing us do is kind of keep pushing at the pieces that we can to make sure that you know we are listening to your concerns and putting taking those into account and asking him to take those into account. So well, no, and I appreciated that the road extended. I mean, that was I think we had talked about that yeah. in the last meeting. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Other comments or questions? Yeah. Yes. My question was, it was kind of the same along the same lines about the width of the road and and. Uh, appearance that it was favoring and you know in, in my mind if the town says that it needs to be 30 feet wide it should be a 30 feet or 60 foot wide road um, if the driveways need to get shortened a little they will lose some of the asphalt from their driveways to account for some of the width of the road they could put pavers in the in the driveways to allow more percolation of water through if we're worried about you know, not enough water making it through, you know, into the subsurface naturally. Um, I guess in some cases we've actually asked, um, not in this one, um, I, but we've actually asked developers to reduce the pavement width um, from third from the standard thirty down to something else because um, because it's in, a, in the better interest of the of the. Reading environment, um, and so it's not necessarily uh, it's better for one or the other. But we do realize that we've got a, a house in the back there that's shoehorned to between two wetland areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're really concerned about the uh, the Reading 
it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, that's right. That's why uh, <laughs> they've worked a lot with it with the Conservation Commission to make sure that that you know that piece of property is really fitting in with all the um, rules about wetlands and setbacks from wetlands and all that. Uh, so. Excuse me, Janice Hart, uh, 70 Westcroft. Is there a regulation as to the length of the driveway going to the house? I mean, that seems like an extensive length of driveway to get to that house in that back corner. Is there? A no, there is not. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a one mile long driveway in this town. Really? Really? really. Is it yours? Well, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess anything goes then. Yeah. It just seems excessive. It, it is, and whoever has to shovel or plow that is going to have fun. Uh, and also bringing the trash out every week. He's going to enjoy it. And what about the runoff of salt? Yeah. Into that wetland area. Do you want to answer that? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the driveway is designed to pitch this way, and we have a, a this is a this gray, fat, fine looking thing. Is a, uh, it's all stone. It's a stone trench that's designed to catch. So uh, that's on the side, Andy, where it would be going? Where the so the water is sloping toward the wetland or away from it? It's well, there's a wetland here and a wetland here. It's sloping oh, right this here. way, so it's going this way. And but there's a stone trench along here that is designed to catch that water put it in the ground and the salt. So the salt is still going to go into the wetland, though. It's going to be filtered through the stone, so through not the just stone directly. Sunlight. But what if there's a lot of rain, a lot of snow, we get a blizzard and there's so much snow and that resident is putting a lot of road salt on their driveway. Won't that just like spread out into the wetland? Well, I also think the Conservation Commission will have conditions. I have to look at our operations plan, but those areas are in the buffer zones to the wetlands. And typically there's restrictions on what you can use to treat ice yeah. in those areas. So and that would be a conservation police, They're going to police that resident? You would have to talk to the Conservation Commission to yeah. <laughs> That would be written into the decision. I, I, I will say that um, the conservation agent, um, you know, historically, right, has, um, has taken those um, rules to heart and have policed um, policed residents on what they can and cannot do according to those sorts of re restrictions. And I, yes. if you notice it, you will be listened to <laughs> yeah. also. Yes. So, yes. I know you're right. People that can't put leaves places, people that can't people mow part of their lawns, um, all those sorts of things, those all get paid attention to. <laughs> and if, if you're mowing what looks to be part of your lawn but is actually wetland, um, the conservation agent will actually come and talk to you about it. So what about like in the summer when they're putting down all these fertilizers? How would that affect the wetland? That's right. Is it? Is it? Is it yeah. yeah. Again, that would be something the commission, <coughs> conservation commission, would have in the regulations. Doesn't make the conservation agent a popular person. <laughs> <laughs> Line involved enough to make it more so, like probably escalates. Yeah, yeah. I, I, right. It, just in general, uh, you know, reading um, uh, enforcement agents don't like to find. They typically, it's you know, trying to work with either residents or or um, business owners to fix the issue first. But certainly, if there's um, if there's if it repeats, um, you know, and, and I'm not specific about this, but in general, um, reading um, reading enforcement agents sort of work that way to try and um, first work cooperatively, and then if there's not a response, they fine and then it escalates from there. Another question about the street light at the end of the cul-de-sac. Wouldn't it be more beneficial to have it forward of the cul-de-sac where it would be lighting the home areas instead of lighting up the woodland? Sure. 
So, yes. so the street light is, is very specific with where they're throwing light, and it's going to be pointed onto the cul-de-sac itself, so the light isn't going to spill. It's not going to be, it's going it's to... It's not just a big flood light, it's a street light that's okay, pointing so it's down. it's actually going to be yeah, filtered to go loop. down to right. light the yeah. area underneath where it is. Okay. And I don't know if you've seen the new LED lights when they change them, or it's yeah, very the focused. Yeah, but it's very focused. It's not this widespread okay. spilling. All right, thank you. Uh, Chair Tell, it's 66 West Rock. Um, so it seems like all the water is always, and I don't know if this is commission or if this is the building or the best thing to this question. But, um, you know, if they're doing all their, their measurements and all their uh, calculations, if, if they're wrong with, and I'm talking stormwater, so yeah, 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 and directly at the top of the wetland area, it seems like they're planning on putting the majority of the out of the runoff there. Um, I don't have any water in the house, no sump pump, um, dry backyard, if that would change. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like by the grace of God. Um, but if that would change for you know uh, feet of, of you know grade changing and you know whatever whatever is is changing, who do I talk to when my basement has a foot of water in it, or who do I ha have an issue with? Who is going to be holding that responsibility? Um, sorry, which address, which house are you? 66 West Grove. This one? This one? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right here. Okay, I see. I'm just looking at the grades. I was obviously concerned with the, the infiltration pond that was going to be there. As the house there, it makes me feel a little bit better, but just the general entire project of having six houses with, you know, as much as they try to mitigate, yeah. it's, it, it's a wet zone, and that's why we're all here. It's right, right. It's yeah. really wet. Everybody has, you know, some sort of water concern. Um, I'll just, you know, I, I want to know who's stuck with the bottom and on me because I don't have, you know, the, the um, water insurance. Okay. <laughs> Spare 25k in my uh, bank just in case uh, you know, they're wrong. Yeah, I, I so guess if they're wrong. You can sue them because they're certifying that it works, uh, and they're building safety into that. It's not like they're they're calculating it right to the you know to the gallon. There's some safety built into that, and it's been reviewed by engineering. And if you've been here before, you've heard me say that the only two things that really control everything in this town are. are you know, wetlands, water, and salamanders, right? They don't care about us, but those things will make sure they work. So, it's been checked. Yeah, the town approved, the multiple commissions approved this. So, if you're going to ask me to go after a multi million dollar, billion dollar company and sue them and Incur those legal fees or something. Right. No. <laughs> That's impressive. That's all. Can I speak to the sure, sure. a little bit? Just the design that you yeah. pulled out. So, mm -hmm. so just in general, I, I don't I don't know if you've been here before, what you know about the system we're proposing, but this is the primary spot where the water gets collected from the roadway. There's this pond here. Um, there is a pipe that goes towards the wetlands, but the intention is to get as much water as possible into the ground here. And not if this isn't going to be a steadily flowing deposit sending water to the, this wetland in the back. Um, all of these houses have their own drainage system underground, so the roof, anything collected on the roof, will get put into the ground to kind of keep that out of flowing this overland towards the wetland in your property. Um, so there's a, there's a, I know what you're saying. There's certainly a lot more pavement. There's a lot more opportunity for water to make it there. Um, but the point of this design is to make sure that. No more water does go here. I know your concern is what if it doesn't work, but I'm just just thought I'd give you the, the background of what the intention of what we're trying to accomplish to, to make sure things are going to happen. So, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah, right, but the, the hundred year storm is going to affect everyone regardless of whether there's buildings there or not. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah, but just in general, a you know, significant rainfall or the melting of the ice mixed with an April, you know, whatever, it's that's that is my concern. I want to know, you know, just who, who I talk to. You know, this is all approved, everybody's thumbs up, don't have a worry in the world, and you know, everybody's all said and done, they pack up their bags, and then you know, pawn yeah, and so I guess right the answer to you, your your question, your ultimate question is, who do you talk to if that's what ends up happening? You talk to the town engineer, um, um, right? I guess there's layers on this design, right? The the um, the applicant's professional engineer with his engineering you know stamp d designed it. Um, the town engineer, who is a professional engineer, uh, reviewed it. Uh, Conservation Commission, who has um, uh, their knowledge and understanding of uh, wetland issues and, and, and to, to the degree you hear some uh, stormwater issues. I don't know whether on the CONCOM there's uh, professional engineers as well, but I, I would be shocked if there isn't. So, what's that? It was peer reviewed on the conservation side. Oh, so. Yeah, so you have at, at, at least three professional engineers who have reviewed this design and said that it, it would work. I, I, th that's all I, I mean, uh, that's what I rely on, right? Um, so, um, but in the end, if it doesn't work, um, you know, and there have been times where, um, where um, some things, you know, don't necessarily work as a hundred percent is planned and you know the town will take a look at it and uh oh this you know this was draining here and there and this ditch was supposed to be to go this way and and they end up you know uh investigating it and fixing it so um you know that's 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 the that's the it's a place to go where we want 56 what will be the height of the driveway which driveway are you talking about? This driveway? The whole thing, yeah. Because so, it will raise the land how much? So, it, each one of these lines is a foot. So, this is this is three feet up in this area here. So, it's about three feet higher. Up around here. Can you do the grades down? Just the grades down to the wetland and grades down up the sides. And it's built on the wetlands? Is not built on the Do wetlands. No, that? no. We have to stay a certain distance from the wetlands. I'm sorry, I just jumped in. No, please. no, no. That's great. Does, does that answer your question? Other questions? Um, sure, sure. Judy Coleman, 18 Milton Road. In the wetlands area, there's existing trees there now. Do those have to come down, or you're reshaping the wetlands, or do the trees that are there stay? Yeah, please. So, so uh, trees in the, the wetlands and the buffer zone. So the wetland has a hundred foot buffer zone. That it's got several of them, but the biggest one is a hundred feet away from the wetland. So some of those trees will come down. Um, I have to count. Is it? A lot of, uh, not a lot, a handful of trees that will come down as part of this project. What conservation will do is make them all get replanted. It's one to one. So every tree that comes down of a certain size has to be replanted. But not um, all the trees that are in that area now. So so this, this area here with these funny looking symbols is the wetland. That cannot be touched. Will not be touched. It will not be touched. We don't we aren't touching within twenty five feet. Probably closer to over thirty feet from, from the wetland itself. All is disturbed. But everything on the front of Howard Street, everything will be clear. Uh, it will be cleared to the extent necessary to to build this. I don't think it's in uh, to anybody's best interest. Just clear cut trees that don't need to be cut down, but the trees will be cut as necessary to to put this in. But realistically, right, because of the location of where the 
um, house pads are and the road, most, I, I can't see many trees in that front half of the, of the site being saved. Yeah, right. right. In the, the, the front area here, it's, it's pretty much disturbed. There's some trees along the side property line. Yeah. And, uh, corners and things like that that will be saved as much as possible and then the road itself will get um, trees uh, outside of wetland planting wetland trees for the buffer zones there will be trees around the street as well so there will be some vegetation planted that, that, that will go through the, um, the tree ward the town street ward to make sure those are done appropriately sure. um, again 149 Bell Street so it looks like all of the lots are built up a little bit. Correct. So we've got um, two and the weather that that lot does as well. So the water that drains off from there, where does that go? You can mention drains underneath that. Yeah. 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 Please do. So, yeah. so the roof, anything that hits the roof, pipe in the ground. Uh, is a we're we're making a, a swale so a depression in the ground yeah. that will send water to this. This is a kind of a natural. If you can picture it today, there's the um, like a channel that goes from the wetlands to this area here. We're trying to replicate that. This will be a um, a low spot here that will get water that comes this way, comes this way, and then it gets piped back to the west, kind of mimicking what it, what it does today. And where are those squiggly lines around those lots? The limit of work. Oh, yeah, that, that's yeah. our um, that's the, uh, the rough approximation of a tree line. So that's the anything from there in. So where you currently have a tree line, or where you will put additional trees? Those are plant. That's that's what is, if it's existing in there. It should stay. So the new trees are these these symbols here. These dark kind of circle. All of these shapes are composed by these new plants. Yeah, so for the buffer zone, the trees for the wetlands, those would be work. Coordinate with the conservation commission to get an appropriate right species. Questions? So, um, uh, remind me where you stand with the Conservation Commission and sort of what you have outstanding there with them and sort of sure. where things so we, stand. We had uh, two, two comments remaining from the peer reviewer. Um, one was related to a, it's called a rounding analysis, a particular type of analysis that looked at this pond. Mm -hmm. They wanted a couple of tweaks, a little more conservative analysis, which we did and submitted that. Um, the other one, oh, the other one was related to a little more clarification of some of these roof, roof runoff systems that I've developed oh, all right. the time. So I, I reached out to Chuck today. He said he hadn't received anything from the uh, peer reviewer. Uh, um, he made it sound like he wasn't sure if he was gonna, going to receive anything. You know, it's more like a bad news type situation. Oh, so yeah. I, I can't say that we're in good standing right. then, yeah. but my understanding is we need to address everything that's been outstanding. We, we did an extensive review of the wetland line. Uh, we just came to agreement on that. And then, so they, they had kind of a two-part review. They had a wetland specialist who looked at the wetland line and the delineation mm -hmm. of the wetlands were. That's something that we worked out a little while back. Um, and then we have, uh, they took a look at the more as well, where those two comments I just mentioned came from. Um, I, uh, we feel like we addressed them, but I, I yeah, I want to speak for. And, and then your next meeting with them, do you have one Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so it sounds to me like, um, aside from, um, aside from the roadway with issue, I, I'm not hearing much. Um, or anything else to, to resolve um, under our control 
Um, and it sounds like you may be ready to, to you, you may have resolved everything with, with conservation I, I as well. So, so um, I think can I, if I could, sure. another way to say that is the, the, I don't think the outstanding comments, uh, they were kind of clarifications in a more detail. Right. I yep. don't think either of them have the potential to drastically change. What right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I, that's what sort of, that, yeah, that's what I understood, that, that there's not going to be anything that, that, that Again, comes out of that. I don't yeah. speak for anybody, but that's yeah. the impression yeah. that I have of what the yeah. right um, so, uh, I guess I'm open to ideas on where to go. Um, so, are you feeling more like you want more people's width here? Um, if they can make it work with our dreams? I am not feeling like I want more pavement width. Okay. Um, I, uh, I guess it, my personal concern is, you know, being able to pull off, um, being able to pull off the roadway. Someone can jump the curb, and that's fine. Um, but not if you then also have um, a tree-lined street where there's trees, you know, lined like that. Um, uh, to me, I think that um, sort of, even though it's a small cul-de-sac, setting it up to be twenty, you know, twenty-four feet without some ability to um, to to have a little bit more capacity on there for parking and 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 emergency vehicles getting around a car that's parked and that sort of thing. I think that's so what about not one hundred percent sold on that. Sloped granite curbing. Did you talk to Ryan yeah. about sloped granite yes. curbing? Yeah. 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 Um, and this may only be my issue. I don't know. No, I think I think if you have a. If there's a way to develop signage and something that will reduce the impact of, and in particular, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to figuring out, you know, I think you'd have to go to the select board on this, but some no parking on um, areas of Howard Street as well. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we could figure one side. Um, I guess. I would be opposed to that. Okay. <laughs> personally, right? Right. I don't think there's enough. There's not going to be in so many people parking on this. It's six houses, right? It's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be that many people parking that often right. on here. That then changes need to be made on who can park where on Howard Street. Okay. I, I I don't think that that the parking issues. I guess my concern is you know someone parking right there. SUV, right? It's ten feet wide. It's nine feet wide. So then you have four, four, and they park, you know, a foot away from the curb. So you know, you then have fourteen foot aisle. It's fine. So what about signage? I'm it's, sorry, I thought you were talking about the cul-de-sac. What about signage? You know, it's fine. But then if someone parks on the other side, then you can't get I, you can't get an right. emergency vehicle through there. I I wouldn't want no parking on that because then it forces then it like it goes on then it goes on to Iowa Street, right? That's not I'd be you know if 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 they want to keep it if if it I, I get keeping it at twenty four feet and maybe only one par parking on one side. That's what I was getting at. Um, so sign it would be signage on one side of no no parking on one side of the whole sack so that there would only be parking on the other side. Um, so. Which, I guess on the flip side, I don't understand why we've developed, we've worked through two other develop two other cul-de-sacs where we had um, uh, okay. we, not even not even curbs. We had just country drainage, um, 
uh, reinforced and th that was never that was never brought up as an issue. So what's the difference I here? The difference is that, that this site has additional stormwater and groundwater challenges maybe that those sites didn't have. Those accepted. Um, I believe yeah, they are off supposed off to be. One, yeah. one off of Franklin. They're not yeah, one off of yeah, Franklin. Yeah, they're still under construction. I don't know why. It just does. Do you have your list? It, it, you know, if it's the if it's the issue about making sure that the 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 um, curbs channel the water into I, into the system, I I get that. Right, we've talked about that in other in other allocations. Um, it sounds I, like that that's not be. what I hear. Oh, that's what I was hearing. I thought that's what you said. I, I think yeah. You need those curbs to get that water to flow to those catch basins. I think it's certainly beneficial. You really need some kind of curb to keep it. This is a lot. So if that's what I mean, that's why you know, George used to be here and the, this conversation would be over by now. Do you want me to invite Ryan to future subdivision hearings? I think if there's open issues, I yeah. think we need to. I didn't realize that there was an open issue. Yeah. I apologize. No, speaking of all that, um, I see in the plan where a lot of the trees are right on next to the pavement. If you could move them back a foot or two, that might also help. Yeah, so the, the trees we're showing are really just more representation. Yeah. I think the reality is is between the town engineer and the tree warden they'll get pushed back so there's the opportunity for a sidewalk. You have to look at the town standard. But they'll be placed in a way that where a sidewalk future plans and they would be in the right spot. So we, we kind of show them representatively and, and make it clear that the tree warden's or an emergency vehicle could jump the curb and wouldn't yeah. be hitting a tree. Sure. We, we can certainly edit the plan however you want it. You know, the intent was to just acknowledge the fact that trees are going in and then when it comes to that time. Um, I, I don't really want to continue this. No, I don't. I don't think we're good. No. Do you? I, I mean, I think that, right, there's, I think um, I don't want this there's a proposal, up. right, <laughs> I'm going to say a proposal on the floor of keeping it the way it is designed here, 24 feet wide with vertical drainage curves with parking on one, on one side of the roadway. Um, and um, I guess I would request Julie, if you can chase that down with, um, you know, with, um, uh, well, I'll talk to Ryan. Yeah. And, and police, police. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if there's an alternative, if you can, um, work at it. Oh, cause I think the desire is to keep it at, at, at the, the same pavement width. Do you want to add a condition to give a maximum pavement width? Yeah, if they come back and say they need 26 feet instead of 24, put that in there to begin with so it doesn't have to come back. Say that again? Yeah, I don't know. All right, so they're looking for a waiver to say only 24 feet. Yeah. So if we put it, if you condition it, at 24 feet and a minimum of 28 in case they come back and say no we wanted a couple extra feet on both sides or whatever so the applicant doesn't have to come back here to get the waiver adjusted because now we're at 20 okay. 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 so so they could actually ask for the waiver and then build it to 30 if engineering agrees right yeah because yeah. they have the right to do okay. it yeah. so covered thing yeah yeah one of the calculations work for drainage area. Right. So that would be a, the process is if something happens where we need it to be wider, we'll be this So as long as the plans, as long as that's decided before the plans are endorsed. Right. 
right? So if it's endorsed, then it would have to come back. To yeah. Right. So the process, just so that <laughs> we're clear and that others are clear, right? This is a definitive subdivision plan. What's the next step after this? If these get drafted and then get endorsed. So any changes in this decision that say prior to plan endorsement yeah. get made and then the plans come back to you. We, we verify them in-house and they come back to you as mylars and you sign them. Okay. So those, we would have to work this out like, you know, soon. Okay. Okay. You have to vote on the waivers separately if you are ready for a vote. And then the decision okay. Do I need to read each one? Um, that we could move that we could move the CBDC um, approve waiver number one for yeah. two for this, number three for that. Mm -hmm. And we could either vote on, can vote on all of them okay. individually, I guess. We just can read what they are. Do we want to vote on all of them? Yes. Before we do, I thought in the past we voted on them individually. We can do that. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, move that the CPDC vote to approve. <clears throat> Is that right? Yep. Vote yep. to approve <clears throat> the waiver. Waiver. Sorry. Page four. Waiver. I'm just going to the beginning. Waiver number one. You know what? Before you do that. So, um, as I had mentioned before, that so there's a number of standards that were put in place. Now it feels like a long time ago for subdivisions. I'm just going to read through these. And, um, right, so these are all waivers that the, um, that the applicant requested um, and uh, in and that we've agreed to, and there's some rationale for agreeing to them. So um, for, from us, or even there's some cases where the town requested the changes. So um, the limited, they're requesting a, um, a waiver uh, uh, for a limited traffic study. Um, uh, our feeling is that for six houses, it doesn't generate that type of, um, of traffic that would change the, it's called the level of service of a roadway. It would create, you know, 30 seconds of delay or more um, uh, at either that intersection or the intersection um, uh, out at the end of, of Howard Street. So six six houses isn't going to make more. Um, what, four, yeah, four additional houses isn't going to make that much of a difference in, in traffic, although you right. You, you will notice some more cars, but not the, the kind that um, would be reflected in a traffic study. Um, the, they're asking for the reduction of pavement width from 30 to, to 24 feet, right? We've talked a lot about that. Um, asking for a waiver to allow the elimination of a landscaped cul-de-sac island. Um, so in our regulations, um, uh, the, they're supposed to put an island in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Um, the uh, town has requested that we don't have that do that anymore at any cul-de-sac. Um, it creates a big problem with snow plowing and that. And so we just, that's even, they have to ask the request, the waiver, but we actually ask them not to do it. Um, uh, allow for the water main to be placed lower than the utilities. Um, that has to do with um, sort of how everything is, um, all the utilities are laid out here. Town engineer reviewed all that, said it was good. It was Mr. Okay. Chairman, you yeah. skipped number four. Did I? Oh, thank you. Um, a waiver to allow um, for no sidewalks. Um, uh, this came up when we were talking about the um, 50 feet versus uh, 60 foot um, right of way width. Um, for a uh, six um, for a uh, six house cul-de-sac, it doesn't it uh, doesn't make sense to this board to have sidewalks that empty out onto a street that 
then doesn't have sidewalks. So um, it seems um, <laughs> that to not to not make sense in this condition. So we we agreed with that. Um, uh, a waiver for allowing for a non-looped water main. Again, I write the the theory is here. It's a short, it's a it's a short street, a short water main for um, that would go reach out to that uh, that last house. Yeah. Um, allow for a waiver to allow for a forced main sewer to service four of the proposed dwellings. That's because of the, um, right, the elevation of the, um, where you need to pump out, um, um, have pumps in the, the main sewer or something again that that uh, the town engineer has reviewed and, and agreed with. Um, allow for a drain pipe with um, 1.9 feet of cover to be placed outside the paved roadway. Um, um, this is that's less than the standard amount of fill um, over over a drain. Um, again, something right as you all know, right? There's there's very little. It's got to stay above the water table. Um, very little room to work with here. Um, of, reviewed by a town engineer. Do you uh, just, sure? Does that mean? Um, Outside of the roadway, because that's that's yeah. Outside the paved roadway. Within the roadway. The paved. Within the paved surface, yeah. Okay. Just for that one point nine feet of cover. So, wait, engineering saw that. Engineering saw. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that should be that shouldn't be outside the, so the, the previous design had the pipe all okay. so outside of the cave surface. So that we were requesting so that would now be solved. So you just need a waiver for the amount of cover. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. So those are the eight waivers that they have asked for from the standard um, subdivision plans, right? Again, some that I guess one or two that we asked for, um, a couple that they asked for, and in, in, uh, in this condition, the town engineer. Um, can, um, Agreed that those those made sense to, to grant. So I just wanted to explain what this whole waiver process, um, what this whole waiver process is. So we said not to talk about the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Move to close the public hearing for the definitive subdivision plan. 135, 139, 149 are Howard Street Infrastructure Holdings. Second. All those in favor? You can vote on the waivers altogether. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I was looking at. We can Any comments on the waivers, on waivers before we... So what do we... Uh, my only comment or question is how we're modifying waiver number eight. We're just deleting the, the two be placed outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Period, period, period after, after cover. cover. Okay. All right. Move that the CPDC vote to approve the eight waivers to the definitive site division site. Division subdivision plan for 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street. As amended. As amended, thank you. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. 
the top? Um, well, I guess I just... Um, um, you can add a condition under fire to plan endorsement yeah. regarding no parking signs. Um, right here, so number eight. It could be under prior to plan endorsement, something that I, I'll just talk to Ryan. Mm -hmm. it's good, and then they think it should be bigger conversation. Mm -hmm. So that. should we just change number two to stop, stop, and parking signs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to Ryan. Yeah. Yes. I talk to him every day about oh, yeah. this. <laughs> um, so number two, two, we amend that to just read stop and parking signs. Sure, yeah. Except the rest of the sentence is just very clear about the stop sign. Yeah, so we can... Of a stop sign. Adequate no parking signs. So a stop sign where the proposed road meets Howard Street yeah. and the potential for no parking signs along one side oh. of the... Subdivision road. Yes. Condition two. I don't think we need the parking signs depicted on the plans. Well, we would decide this all before endorsement, so they could be. Yeah. Okay. And stop sign and parking signs. Have you proposed a transformer anywhere? To the, uh, no, we don't show a transformer, but the electrical uh, configuration that's here, and so it's, it's, it's just a long time ago. The layout was very similar, but uh, some modifications that came from RMD, the right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, So what we're showing for electric service here is what uh, we haven't gone to them with this latest Yeah, I think we need to take that condition out. Yeah. So I think that's it, right? So we'll have to choose a street name too for the engineering department. So we can put TBD. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put your name on this one? What? Put your name on everything. I propose Curly Street. Curly Street? Curly Howard. Three so I was just looking at the 1875 map, and uh, there's a, the spot basically where Boy Street is. Boyce's lot. So, like, half of our <laughs> yeah. our street names belong to whoever used to own the lot. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. Um, so, motion to... Sorry, yeah. Motion to approve definitive subdivision plan for 135, 139, 149 R. Howard Street. As amended. As amended. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. I'll be in touch with you in our future conversations. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just, you know, I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous. We're doing two weeks. Maybe we can do one more, but yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, Move that the CPDC approve the uh, application withdrawal without prejudice for 21 oh, 23. Yeah. Right. So Street. No, you already voted for the withdrawal. We didn't vote on it. We, we, vote did. we, just, we no. just announced that it was withdrawn. Second. I have another piece of paper. We voted on that. Uh, you voted on it. Yeah, yeah, we voted on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I have the notes. Draw right? my. <laughs> <laughs> you said you weren't going to vote. You, were, you said. <laughs> no, I did. But then, I said, but then we I, voted on it afterwards. Oh, you might have been after Main Street closed. You might have stepped out for a minute or something. Oh, I did. Do I have to continue? No, I didn't. Do I have to continue? I just I zoned out for a minute. Okay. I'm continuing so, the CRE so Ventures. Okay. So, motion to continue the. Public hearing site plan review for 258 262 Main Street, June. Reading CRE Ventures. Through March 9th at 8 o'clock. Through March 9th at 8 o'clock. Second. All those in favor? Sure. All right. I have minutes in me, and that's about it. There's a. Um, I wanted to just review the feedback. I don't know if you guys looked at the feedback we got from the state on the design guidelines. A little bit. Uh, yeah. I know. Well, so it, it's a lot of text, and it boils down to a couple things. Um, one is the use of the word shall instead of, or yeah. should instead of shall, um, and kind of this notion that these changes in, like, Section 10 um, are being un potentially unduly restrictive on pe on potential development. Um, so I had some ideas of how to get us there, and I sent them back, and I haven't heard back yet. Um, I'm trying to remember this last week. So, no, let's go through, because there were a couple ahead of Section 10, I think. Um, he was a change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I made. There's a. It was in the. Which one? Andrew's last email. Oh, it was an Andrew's email. There are a few things I did. Like, we we revised the application for the downtown smart growth district, and we made the requirements match on both. So, mm -hmm. I, there's a few changes I added into the list of things that are required. Um, so that's. Really Housekeeping. Neither here nor there. Yeah. 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 Um, we just want them to be the same. Yeah. And then let's see. Feedback. It really came down to section 10. I think. So. I thought there was something beforehand, but maybe not. I think it was the parking thing, which we said. Yeah, but you said you just still the yeah. ad. Yeah, and I, I know. Okay. Yeah. Because like we have it in there elsewhere. It's, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Never mind. Yeah, just Let's see. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, that. Yeah. And then were there new comments here? No, yeah, so this is new, right? So because he wrote back that he so He thought you were changing things. And yeah. I was saying there's a slight difference. Did you all look at this? I did, but I, I think did. you're you, the bottom line is you're gonna you, you're going we're gonna delete you're it. You're okay with what I'm writing. Yes. You okay. Yes. All right. So because we covered we we have it covered. I think so. Yes. Which is part of yeah, yeah. <coughs> right. We we had talked about <coughs> some of this that in some of these cases we've put the same thing in twice to add emphasis. <laughs> right? And in this case he the state got confused about why we were adding emphasis and so like okay forget it like <laughs> we, we don't need it it's covered and they have to be you know a, what do they use that like abundantly cautious or whatever because yep. they don't know you guys they don't know your process they don't know what we're after yep. right so okay so you're okay with that and then there's section 10 where there yet let's see In there? Okay. Um, he added some text in, and which I think is fine, and um, just clarifying like what's a guiding principle, what's a consideration, what's a standard, so, you know. Um, 
And, and then here. Bingo 101. <laughs> I know. Like, oh. Here, are these are like, oh, this seems too bad. I think those are all old comments. Um, considerations. Yeah, and so then here you change shall to should. I just wanted to make sure you knew that this was happening. Um, and is there anything else? No. So that's basically what's happening. And um, is there a few that? Yeah. So, right. I saw in there, there was really three changes that they requested. One was change that from should, from shall to should. should. Right. So just according to the internet, <laughs> should is the past tense of shall. So it should be shall. <laughs> for zoning, for code language though, I think it's uh, yeah. shall is, shall is a directive. Should. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's like when the town council always like talks about that. Right. Like, yeah, that's funny though. Know. <laughs> you know, and if you, if any of you know Bill Rayel, he would like love for that. He would appreciate that. <laughs> He's like a very uh, kind of quirky, dorky. You, know, you can tell by his email. Yeah. yeah. Um, so really, really nice guy. So there's that. Should it shall? There's the. Um, there's the parking thing where we said in some cases we might ask you for more parking above and beyond zoning. Yeah, but what we really said where the where the meat is is said we said uh, you have to develop a parking plan to address all your parking. Show us how it's going to work. Show us how it's going to going right. to work. Yeah, um, and then um, there was a third. Oh, that whole thing about guiding principles versus. Um, standards versus, standards versus guiding versus. principles. So we're right. yeah. So semantics. this is not really we're not really developing standards. Where in this section we're saying this is what you should do, and right those were the th things really to consider. Yeah. Considerations. Should. 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 <laughs> so yeah. I just found another one, and should is recommend, and shall is. Yes. Have to. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. But I liked my first. Okay. One. So. <laughs> So I know, Julie, there was a there's a push that we want to be we want to enact these. Um, right. That's right. I mean I, I think like there's probably another wave of forty Rs in our yeah. near future. Yeah. Um so what has to happen to get it enacted? The state has to disagree with the changes. So I'm waiting for feedback on my last few comments. And I'll let them know, like, I'll let him know tomorrow that you all agree that these changes are you know, fun. Let's see what they say. I guess the question in my mind is, like, whether they still feel like we are potentially unduly restricting future development with all these extra protections for. And they're not really extra beyond, like, like, what I tried to impress upon him is that you're kind of putting in writing what your process has been things you would ask for, things that seem like common sense. I mean, that's my read on yeah, the situation, yeah, yeah. Yes. right? Yes. You're not necessarily making it harder for someone to develop. Just asking them to consider what's there. You're trying to be upfront about it so right. the developer doesn't come in and get blindsided. Right. Yeah. So, that's So, the process would be that he, he's going to get you, he's going to hopefully come back and say, yeah, we're good with all these. Then you can hit accept all, and then at our next meeting we can go to approve. Yeah, accept. yeah. That would be the that would be the goal. But then, does it have to then go back? No, I think you guys already voted to approve it, okay. and that now it just has to be reviewed by DHCD. And so we could tie it up neatly, put a bow on it, and have you guys vote on it again. But okay. you probably don't have to. All right. Um, they just have to accept it at right. this point. Right. Um, um, the DHCD feedback referring to the substantially developed subdistricts is has nothing to do with what we were trying to do accomplish. It appears. Well, I think he's saying like you could There's accomplish these way things through yeah. zoning. 
and we talked about creating sub-districts, but we didn't want to have like these artificial boundaries that could just change yeah. depending on what the buildings are used for and when they're redeveloped and who the neighbors are. And but it almost sounds like the higher. substantially developed sub-district you wouldn't need as much residential or as much affordable residential, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to protect the one right next to the substantially developed right. district. Right. I think our district is so small that that makes it yeah. the yeah. difference between yeah. one sub district and the <laughs> and the other. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It mm -hmm. would be hard. Right. And like mm -hmm. as of right, residential density downtown is zero right now. Yeah, so like on in business B, right? So oh, anything yeah. we've added with the downtown smart growth district is like residential uh, zoning residential, right? Zones, yeah, right. Like you can do under zoning, yeah, right. So anyway, I don't know what, what my point was there, but right. all right, that's great. And then what else? We have minutes. We can talk about South Main Street some other day. Um, I really just pulled some design standards to. from the DSGD ones right now and tried to fit them in, but we just might want to think of anything additional because it's a different part of town. So if you come up with anything for next month, then. And like, you did, you went through it to see if anything needs to change based mm -hmm. on our new zoning, mm -hmm. right? So we can talk about that out more. <laughs> South Main Street <laughs> Design Best Practices. Yeah. Andrew did a review of the right. document no, yeah. to see if we need to change anything yes. based on the zoning that we just put in place. Um, or if we would want to change anything anyway. Can we look at it? I just, I'm not. Yeah. It doesn't have That's to be fine. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It doesn't have to yeah. be tonight. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there are a couple other things I want to talk to you about real quick. Um, so March 30th, we have scheduled a zoning workshop um, to talk about potential zoning for 2020, November 2020 town meeting. Um, and Andrew and I have been working on it well we ha when we have time. Like you saw, I sent some stuff today, sorry. Um, but I'm trying to think of like the format we might want for that and, and the location. Um, and I, we have blocked out some time on our next agenda, which is March 9th, to actually really talk about zoning. Mm -hmm. So um, starting at, I don't know, 8 o'clock or 8.30, like, the night will be devoted so to kind of... March 30 would be talk with the public about zoning. March 30 would be, like, advertise kind of a workshop to really, like, get feedback um, before we have the public hearings and stuff like that. And then March 9th, we'll block out some time to kind of give you an update on where we are and get your feedback and get some more direction for what we want to show on March 30th. Um, last year you guys had a meeting that was specifically dedicated to zoning. I wasn't here at the time. Was that in this room? Yep. And um, you invite abutters and yep. lots of abutters. We invited lots and maybe one to three came, <laughs> I think. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. The usual suspects. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this year we should reach out to town meeting. Like yeah. Specifically. Um, yeah. Right. I can't remember specifics, but um, uh, I think that there were at a meeting or two some statements, some people, some public comment. Um, uh, saying that we should consider specific zoning changes. I know one was about clear cutting, which then came up at um, um, at town meeting. Um, but I thought that there was um, was another one that came up during the a public comment before our meeting. Does related, anyone recall that? Relative to the conservation land and where the compost center is. There's clear, clear cutting going on somewhere. Oh, I know what it was. What it was, it, it's, it's all related. Is um, they both came up and tell me uh, zero setbacks. Mm. You do not like them. What? What? Good. He, he, yeah. Okay. Or no, it's what it wasn't zero setback. The comment was making working in more landscaping 
and right. soft and and you know soft skin soft yeah, yeah I mean, into soft into soft our soft. into yeah into into our design guidelines or zoning that was comment one and that sort of came up in town meeting and the, the other comment definitely came up as an instructional motion about um, setting up rules about um, about <laughs> clear cutting um, uh, uh, when developments are established so I, I, I bring those up because right the there was a resident that wanted us to talk about those and I right yeah no that's good I think that we can talk about we can really look at landscaping and green space in our South Main Street design guidelines mm -hmm. yep. it's probably more appropriate than, than the like it might be yes. in the downtown yep. um, and then as far as clear cutting goes if we ever get around to modifying our subdivision regulations we can try to put in some more some stronger language about that um, and I, I know that like we always from the get-go ask developers yeah. to you know minimize the trees yeah. they're taking down and, and yeah and conservation has very specific requirements about trees so right it's, beyond that there uh, I'll, I'll zoning there there on the clear-cutting thing there was an instructional motion at town meeting saying that the town shall um, that was endorsed Shall. <laughs> it, shall. Wasn't a, it was an instructional motion. It was an instructional motion saying that the town shall develop a policy on clear cutting associated with new developments, and it wasn't directed to CBDC or a anyone else. It was the town shall, and so I don't know where that goes. Um, and someone in that discussion said, "Well, the town already." Our conservation already has a policy, yeah, that's but right. um, but the instructional motion still passed. So, if we're if if there's something that we need to do with regard to zoning, then we should. I don't know what other boards are doing related to that, but um, okay, I'll look into so, it. I, I actually I know who said I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Um, okay. So, our zoning workshop for the 30th, do you think we should try to do something? It's hard, I know it's hard to think about when we haven't really talked about zoning since November, December, because we've been, our agendas have been really busy, but um, like, I'm trying to do a little planning in advance of the 30th. I was thinking we could try to do something at the library. We're thinking we should invite all town meeting members. Um, the things we've been focusing on this year are the uses, the definitions, and the sign by law. And we could easily, maybe not easily, but we could put together some specific questions we can ask to get to get the general input, um, and then maybe some more specific. What's your goal, Julie? Yeah, what's the goal, right? That's the question. What's the goal? Um, it's a little bit hard to know at this point since we haven't looked at zoning in a few months. Um, I think like one goal would be to alert town meeting members to the changes like before the week they get their warrant in the mail or the week before the town meeting or the day of town meeting when they pick up their handout. Um, that would be one goal. It's just like this is what's on the radar and you know like and invite input and feedback like right before we even have public hearings. Um, I'm not sure. Well, so, but I think even stepping back a little bit more, I think that's a good goal, right, but, right. Uh, for that. But unlike the, so the zoning changes that we made last go round were, some were cor corrective, but more were focused on um, economic development or, you know, sort of increasing development, right? These three that you have, laid out here, or at least two of them, are, I'm going to say, more protection-focused, more on um, correcting um, issues that we may have seen up, that seem, yeah. getting in front of issues that we may see coming. So not necessarily, you know, sort of trying to drive some change um, in development, but more about protecting, um, protecting. It's a, yeah, they're kind of about making the table of uses 
like and the, and the definitions like more clear making sure we are accounting for things or defining things in a way that like the, when people come in with ideas like the building commissioner and staff can like easily say where that goes and and then also like the whole change of use idea right yes so that would be i guess maybe a protection because right yeah. now site plan review is not triggered by much um but that doesn't mean that that's right. right. Um, so, the, and the reason why I bring that up is, is what I wouldn't want to do is go out and have this workshop, right, and have all of these ideas that are like all right. sort of all over the place. This, you know, we want to try and fix this because this does this, and we're going to change this because this does that. I think we need to like this go round. What are we trying to do? Right. What's we're we're yeah. trying to fix these problems, or we're trying to do this. And I think that's that's um, um, yeah. So that we can then focus in on the right three or four or five changes, because I don't think that we can do. I don't think town meeting can handle more right. than two or three or four no. or five changes. Because uh, right. <laughs> so I mean to that. Point, like should we so I don't want to cast the net too too widely is really right. what I'm getting at yeah I wouldn't do more than if, if we do the uses table I think that honestly can probably be the only thing so the the challenge there is that the definitions really would need yeah. to be changed as well understood I'm just but saying yeah. there's so yeah. much detail in there that it's you know. gonna get tough and then and then we also have like the sign bylaw is the one with the most like discrete kind of fixes that we can identify like and that we've had some you know real specific problems yeah. related to the other two are more nebulous and more just we're trying to modernize it a bit yeah. um so yeah i'll have to think about yeah. that because yeah. they're all yeah. like, kind of complex yeah. um I mean, we could frame it in the sense of like site plan review and the change of use and talk really about the use table and, and frame it that way. There's a, I, but there's I, a lot. There's a lot, right? right? And so I, will, I think that we need to think about okay. that before we, we bite off too much. Right. So let's all think about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I know it's late. I sent around some changes today I was just looking at the table of uses and thinking like it's really easy to get lost in like the detail and the terminology and then looking at the definitions just adds like another level of mm -hmm. confusion so what I was trying to do today is just really think about like like if it were a clean slate what uses would be grouped together that would have similar externalities and and then like and then from there I was looking at like okay what would we call that heading like so that's if you looked at what I did today that's and I didn't get to like page three I really only focus on page one and two um, and I was looking a lot at like the retail and personal services um, different um, like office uses and institutional uses in retail and personal services and things like that. so should we wait till next time to talk about it more, or do you want to? I think. Um, Train. Yeah, okay. I think. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. We spent a lot of time. I felt I spent a lot of time on Howard Street, which I wasn't anticipating. And um, should have really talked to Ryan. <laughs> Not you. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, but we right. hope we accomplished something. Something is off. We did. Yes. I was worried for a minute that it might not get off the plate, and I was like, "Can we hold the minutes and just get give them back to Julie, real quick?" Sure. Good? We have two or three, Julie. There are three. There's November fourth, which I think you had a couple times ago. Yeah. December 9th and January thirteenth. Okay. So. I remember reading them before, and I just read Community. Which one are we going to do first? You started to do um, January 13th, 13th earlier in the night. So I guess my caveat is if we can do this in five minutes, can yep. we do that? Yeah. Yep. I would like to make a request 
Did somebody fix the uh, title of the document from school council agenda? Yes. I don't know how to do that. I noticed that earlier today that when you open the PDF, it says school council agenda. And I don't know why. Do you see that? In the PDF. It's, in the PDF. In the PDF. it's PDF. not on this document. It's nowhere. It's just a weird. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like a bug. Yeah. Um, any other changes to the meeting minutes for January 13th? Can you, can you, yeah. Nice. Move to approve the meeting minutes for January 13th, 2020. As amended. As amended. All those in favor? Second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 12-9? Yep. Just page numbers right here to talk about that. Thanks to approve meeting minutes for, oh, yeah, sorry, for, Jan, for December 9th, 2019, as amended, or as, yeah, as amended, because you need the page numbers, right? Yes, correct. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Do we need to do November? Yeah. Sorry, did you just vote on December? Yeah. <clears throat> no changes. Yes, the numbers. Numbers. Oh, right, okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, Julie, quick question. What is the official title of the building inspector? The building commissioner? We have two um, building commissioners and um, two building inspectors. Okay. No, that's it. Then it's mm -hmm. correctly. Move to approve the meeting minutes for November 4th, 2019, as amended. Ago, right? No changes? I thought we had it some last time we talked. Yeah, you probably did last yeah, time. Yeah. Some facts, but I'm not going to get into it. It's probably going to change it. Second. All those in favor? Great. Really quick, sorry, there's one question I wanted to ask you. For the March 30th workshop, do you think you could make an earlier time, like 6 o'clock? Or seven o'clock. What day of the week is it? It's a Monday. Yeah. Six would be hard, but I could do minutes early at six thirty. Six thirty? My catch thirty one days? Yes. And I can do it. Alright. And the bump is the thirty first. Got it, got it, yeah. So because if I book it in the library they kick us out at nine. So if we did seven thirty to nine might seem really crap. I understand we kick us out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's actually really nice when they over the loudspeaker and you're like, okay. Sure. Okay, so maybe like six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. All right. Um possibly I'll do a little more thinking about so about what that. We should do we should give them an update on what we're doing. Right. Yeah. What is it do and then maybe do something instructional. Like today, John was trying to try to explain subdivision bylaw, you know, or why somebody has the right to do something, or why somebody has why we don't have the right to stop somebody from doing something. I don't want to have to explain that every, every single meeting. I assume it'll be out of the town meeting right there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe pick a topic that, that people just don't understand. Try to explain. Briefly, like half an yeah. hour or something. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. Do you the difference between 40R, 40B, and, actually, and the town doesn't actually develop the properties? Yeah. Or, or have any control on what this is. Flexibility or okay. funds to just swoop in and buy properties so people don't right. want yeah. uses to go in them. Give them a little CPA. Uh, <laughs> that they don't like. Or at the end. Okay, good. No. It's been a long time since we tried to do that. And 
it's a complete, it's, I should say, completely different community, but things have changed a lot since we tried to enact the CPA. Yeah, so... The Community Preservation Act, it's... Um, That's a barbed subject. What's that? That's a barbed subject. subject. It's, um, right? Basically, it's a fund. It's a fund. It's a tax. That's, it's a ta tax. Yeah, from taxes that go into park you can spend it on like parkland or uh, recreation or things or, affordable housing uh, affordable housing historic. or historic yes. preservation yeah. all things that Reading cons constantly struggles with trying to figure out how, how to do. buy open land and it's control what, the tips? Like no. what? what what is the tool is the uh, CPA it's a it's a one percent tax um, on. It used to yeah, so I think it could be up to three. Oh, yeah. um, and then so towns can and can basically you adopt the legislation locally and you decide, the town meeting decides like what the percent tax is going to be and then the state will match up to a certain amount of it and the matching is getting over the years it's gotten less as more and yes. more communities get involved because the pot of money like it isn't necessarily growing although i think i recently heard that there was more allocated there but if you um, now if but you, now there's more towns so. if you look at the towns that have enacted the the um cpa it's uh, um it's a lot i mean we're we stand we're in out. the minority we stand out yeah not having it but in not having yes. it, mm -hmm. yeah. you stand out. Yes. So the other one, I mean, I'm always curious about this. So in New York, we did we did TIF zones. So you capture the additional property taxes and reinvest in usually parks yeah. and park parks or parking. I mean, so you should have done for the two downtown to get some parking. But sorry, I don't <laughs> think that. that you can. You can't do TIF district in Massachusetts. I don't think you? so either. I just wondered if there's a similar. That you can do a diff, which is slightly different. Different, yeah. Um, um, you had to ask. I used to know. So I asked these two things in my interview, actually, four, four plus years ago. Um, about, I asked why the town didn't have CPA, and I asked, you know, if the town would ever consider doing tax increment financing. And um, the answer I got to both of those questions was, we need to get the override approved first. <laughs> So now we're. Right, you're gonna get yeah. I mean the same talking the about, same objectives about. Yeah. We are talking about you know potentially a business improvement district yeah. as our downtown district management organization. Right, it's so something like Post entirely. Office Square, which is taking something here and adding you know enough property value just in and of itself. I mean capturing that and reinvesting it into a parking structure would have been perfect solution in a lot of ways. So, but yeah. Because that's the only way you guys are going to get an actual parking structure. The only way to do it is to capture right. some additional property tax somewhere. Right. It's just not economically feasible otherwise. What if the world changes and we don't need parking? Which I think might come first. So, we can give you a couple updates while you pack up if you like. Um, can we close the meeting? So the no, not if she's no, giving up. Not, oh, you're giving updates, updates. Okay. Uh, so, we were awarded the MVP grant. Um, so, we'll start that planning Fantastic. process, which Work. will be a community workshop process, really, to get a lot of feedback on the um, areas that we find most vulnerable and what our priorities really are. But after that, if we get our designation, we can look at subdivision regulations and infrastructure upgrades and more. So um, expect that to come. And if, it would be great if you guys were at the meetings, too, to some degree. Um, we're looking at an art box program, which is the painting of utility boxes to create a placemaking initiative and some public art initiative in the downtown area. So um, we'll be doing our call to artists in about a month, I believe, in order to paint up to five utility boxes in the downtown area. Um, so I'm sure you've seen them in other towns, murals on the electric boxes, but um, that's got a great little one on the MBTA's uh, signal case. Mm -hmm. I think a little guy has been there forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. 
So that should be a fun project. So for the MVP process, we have to do either two four-hour workshops with stakeholders or one all day like eight hour workshop with stakeholders <laughs> and uh you guys are stakeholders <laughs> um so we're andrew's gonna work on trying to coordinate that and get a find some dates that will work for like you know all the different people and we yeah. might want one or two of you to this is pretty quickly. Okay. It's got to be wrapped up by June or July. So it's called the what is it called? The community resilience, resilience building, building process. Yeah. That's yes. That's what we're going to do next. And then also the housing choice grant mm -hmm. is up again. So we were designated in 2018 for two years, and we just got today the notice that we can get redesignated for 2020. So we'll be working on that. Mm -hmm. um, downtown parking. What's the turnout like for that? I didn't yeah. attend. For the downtown parking, it was the room was packed. It was good. The comments were good. The feedback was good. Um, so I presented last week to the select board, and also back in January. And then I'll be presenting again on March seventeenth. Um, and hopefully, it'll be a slightly new board then because they will have an election in early March. But hopefully, there'll be some momentum on that. So we'll see. So, if I can say on that, right, I think right, the, the uh, good work that you're doing is focused on you know, right, sort of shorter term fixes. Um, I do think that, and I know Nick brought this up, um, is that we, we sh um, should be also thinking about whether some of the standards that we have, like um, uh, assuming that um, that the municipal parking lots can accommodate any, um, <laughs> any any business that happens to be within 300 feet of it, um, right? That's a big assumption, um, and that's been going on for a long time. That we continue to just assume that works. Um, you know, m maybe there's, and I don't know how. Right? I feel like that's to some degree on us. It definitely is. Like if you're talking about. I was actually thinking that this was the second thing you were going to say earlier about the zoning. Oh. The public comments that we've heard about zoning, because we have had comments that maybe we need to start requiring parking for commercial developments. Yeah. Right, but we sort of need, we can't, right, we can't do this, this board, I don't know, feel like can do that all by themselves, because we need to sort of also understand what, what else is going on what kind of i guess we need data and we i think we need to have right that as part of a focus on a sort of a workshop on what are we going to do what's this board going to do about parking well i, I wonder like to like if yeah. we do put in place some of the shorter term solutions that were are under discussion right now if that picture might shift a little bit if, if it like the idea is that it'll release some of the pressure like it'll yes. alleviate some of the uh, right, right, so, right, but I guess yeah. th that's exactly right. If you do that now, you, right? If, you, if, if we do that now, then then now is also the time to be thinking about okay, what's what's three years down the line, or what's the next step, right? Because that's maximizing everything that we can do based on the world as we know it. But right. we we sort of somewhat control some of the future world, yeah, um, or future demand. So. Yep. Um, I don't know. How, I think we need to have that conversation. I just don't know when and how. Right. Cool. So that's that's that in a nutshell. There's probably a lot of other things I left off the list. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> questions? Sure. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. It's really tough, All right.